check into hotels each year. Some check into another dimension. It's more real than it was a dream. That's not a person. That's a ghost. It scared the living hell out of me. This thing was coming to get us. When the experiences of thousands are contained within a single building, the laws of space and time are changed. Past invades the present, and fears turn to reality. They say that with time, everything fades. But whoever said that has never stepped into a haunted hotel where dark stains left behind by the traumatic deaths of those that came before can mark anyone who enters. Especially here in the Welsh countryside, in an ancient and isolated inn, where paranormal investigator Carl Hutchinson and his colleague have come for the sole purpose of finding that dark stain. He'd heard all the reports and the different types of haunting, and he just ticked all the boxes that we were looking for. Welcome, mate. Great to be here. Hi. Nice to see you. Over the centuries, the Skirid Inn's brush with all things diabolical has become the stuff of legend, and according to many, part of the inn's history itself. It was like stepping back in time. The Skerrit Inn upstairs at one time was used as a courtroom during what the English went through as the witch finders. Witch hunts marked by torture and agony. One of the most prolific judges that sat um, in the court was Judge Jeffries, and they called him the hanging judge. Potentially up to 180 people were executed by hanging inside of that building. That's why hanging meant slow strangulation. These people didn't die a quick death. An experienced paranormal investigator. All yours. Let's go to work. Carl is here looking for hard proof. You can't just go in there thinking because somebody says it's haunted, it's haunted. Unless you experience it, it's all word of mouth. OK. Ready? Ready. We were going to check into the rooms upstairs, um, have a quick walk around, and then come up with a plan for the investigation for the night. After getting comfortable, they head to a room at the epicenter of hauntings at the inn, where they set up their motion-activated camera. Documenting paranormal activity is key. We have to have documented events as of evidence. We'd lock the door, and we were the only ones that had the key. All that's left to do now is wait and hope for something to show up. Good night, folks. When we booked the Scared Inn, uh, the plan was that once the bar had shut, we would be the only ones actually in, in the premises. I got excited. I was really wanting this investigation to go really well. Ready? But the Scared Inn just had other plans for us that night. All of a sudden, we heard the door slam very loudly. We heard footsteps as well. I've never been to a location that the activity was literally 20 minutes into us starting. Um, and that kind of worried me in a way. Since they're the only guests in the old inn, who or what 
could possibly be walking around. All of a sudden, we heard the motion camera going off. Something physical has, has triggered the motion activating. And we knew that there was nobody in that room. Hey, come here. You've got to see this. What? They've captured something on film. When a spirit dies in a traumatic form, it leaves an imprint on the location and definitely on the spirit. I'm six foot tall. This thing towered probably a good two foot above me. And if they have a negative intent, that power can be extremely, extremely harmful. I kind of was gobsmacked. I couldn't really put into words what I was seeing. You don't normally get growls. Growls on an investigation aren't good things. So the fear was building up. When something growls, that's a warning. This is an entity telling Carl, you better stop because I'm exerting control and dominance here. This shadow figure was a sinister, scary thing. Judge Jeffries had a bit of a reputation of being quite nasty quite violent. Guilty. We just presumed that it was the judge that we'd captured. Thinking, OK, where do we go from there? What do we do now? We have to find a way of trying to communicate. But something else across the hall reaches out first. What's going on? I don't know. If you had this horrific, traumatizing death, you're going to carry all of that negative energy to the other side and express it. There really is an arithmetic to a haunting. What goes into it comes out of it. This activity is starting to snowball. It's the unknown of what was going to come next. <laughs> At the Skirrit Inn in the wilds of Wales, paranormal investigator Carl Hutchinson and his colleague have pried open a Pandora's box of spirits. Spawned from events in the spirit's traumatic past. And now Carl can only pray he can slam the box shut. I felt every possible emotion that you can possibly have when you have a fright. I was scared. But the inn's past is filled with pained souls. There have been reports of a suicide in, in the ensuite of a, a, of a woman. She'd committed suicide in the bath. Thank you. A traumatic haunting mm -hmm. is often when a person has a sudden traumatic or violent death and cannot or will not move on from that. And those hauntings can be quite traumatic to the living people that encounter them. 
We took in a digital recorder to do some EVPs, electro voice phenomena. We were going to ask questions. We were going to see if we could communicate via that way. Can you tell me how old you are? Trying to get names, dates. Where were you born? It sounds like there's movement. It was kind of like a shuffle step. Did you die here? I didn't know what was going to be next. I am not dead. I am alive. <laughs> My friend suddenly screamed. I hear something. just kind of was like you were walking into a somebody else's personal space. Seeing nothing in the bathroom, he goes back to the recording. Let's play it back. <laughs> I then had this sudden cold shiver down my back because somebody was laughing at us. Why were they laughing at us? What did they have intended for us? What were they going to do to us? Then all of a sudden, I can hear water running. My mind flashed back to, hang on, that's where the woman committed suicide in the bath. A traumatic end that feeds a dark spirit. Important thing to know is that an entity is manifesting to get your attention. Take it seriously and realize you're putting yourself in harm's way and there can be repercussions. There's no sign that the taps have been running at all. <laughs> My heart was racing. I had that anticipation feeling that something was going to come out of the darkness. The atmosphere in the room changed. It got very, very cold. There was a feeling of malevolence in the room. whether it was a ghost. I didn't know whether it was a demon. All I knew that it wasn't from this world. It was coming to get us. At the Skirid Inn in Wales, Paranormal investigator Carl and his colleague face spirits traumatized by their own violent deaths. One's hell-bent on making themselves known, but none more terrifying than the one that's out to get them, the living. 
as this thing was creeping further and closer into the room. The adrenaline was shooting through my body. I wanted to get out of the room. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. When the light went on, there should have been something there. There should have been something physically in front of me. That was more scary to me than the event of itself. When you encounter an entity that has died a traumatic death, do they think you're the person who did this to them? Revenge is a very, very strong motivation for a haunting. Unsure of what they may come up against next, Carl and his colleague regroup downstairs. Because we were carrying on investigating, I had to go back into sensible head. But I was petrified. I wanted to get out of the place. It took me so much energy inside of myself to keep in the location. Carl stirred up something that was more than he could handle. And the repercussions can be traumatic equally for the investigator themselves. I'm going to try this. This time, they turn to their gear for protection. It goes off when something enters its magnetic field, dead or alive. Whatever it is, it's not quite done with them yet. We heard glasses rattle. You just felt there was eyes boring into you, that you were being watched from all angles. straw for me. I didn't want to carry on. I didn't want to ask any more questions. I didn't want to know. Packed the stuff up and we left. Back home, Carl's investigation at the inn takes one more bizarre twist. When we get home from an investigation, we always do a review all the things that we captured, whether it's EVP, photos, video. Literally every bit of equipment that we used that night had come up with media areas or problems, and nothing was there. Everything was blank. There are electromagnetic fields that are uh, surrounding these traumatic entities can make footage go blank. They seem to have free reign with our technology. But Carl has no doubts about his time at the Skirid Inn. What we experienced all the way through the night was definitely paranormal, from the door slamming to the figure that we saw in the bathroom. I couldn't explain what I'd witnessed, what was creeping towards me. I never want to have that experience again. I never want to be that <laughs> afraid. <laughs> We'd heard this place was haunted, and to be truthfully honest, looking back, I wish I'd never heard of the scary dude. When spirits are trapped in a hotel where their lives were cut short by brutal violence, it's not always about trying to drive guests out. Sometimes these spirits need to share those final traumatic moments and will stop at nothing to show you. For travelers, America's Deep South boasts some of the grandest hotels, dating back to the Civil War. But because of that, they're also known to attract the spirits of those that fought here, died violently, and never left. 
Not exactly the kind of hotel perk newlyweds Joe and Karen Noonan were looking for. When we chose to stay there, it, it was completely random. It was just a overnight stop on the way to New Orleans. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay here tonight. Thank you. It's a very nice place. Yeah. We Thank knew nothing of its reputations or anything. We just took a chance. Oh. Did you see that? Didn't I mention? The place is haunted. The owner definitely believed that there were paranormal occurrences in the hotel. I hope it's not an extra charge. I am not a real believer in ghosts. I'm a realist. There's a reason. There's an explanation. But Karen is much more sensitive when it comes to the paranormal. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. When I entered the room for the very first time, I was on edge. It was almost like an electric feeling. But Joe's focus is on the more practical side of things. I did not feel anything. I just walked into the room, got things ready for bed. There's absolutely no explanation for it, but I was uneasy in the room. It might have something to do with what's next door to the hotel. I did not know it sat near six cemeteries. Filled with soldiers massacred during the Civil War. The town itself was under bombardment for months. 22,000 shells fell into the town. People were digging holes in the ground to try to hide. Nothing quite leaves an energetic imprint like war. The sight outside her hotel window triggers a traumatic memory from years ago at a cemetery back home. As I was leaving the cemetery, footsteps followed me. I looked around. I was alone. I did not think that it was my imagination. It was too real. This was something paranormal. I was terrified. It's a feeling she can't shake. The fear level I felt in the room was worse than in the cemetery. I was scared and I was literally afraid to close my eyes and I couldn't wait for morning to get there. It sounded as if someone was moving furniture across a hardwood floor. But it's not what's upstairs that Karen needs to worry about. There was a corpse lying on the bed next to me. It scared the living hell out of me. After Joe and Karen Noonan check into a grand Civil War era hotel in America's South, Karen realizes that she and her husband may be sleeping with the dead. There was something 
a human not living lying next to me. It scared the living hell out of me. What could be more horrifying than seeing a corpse in bed with you? Clearly, that veil between worlds is getting thinner by the minute here. First, she hears it. Now she sees the corpse, and there's probably no stopping it at this point. Not even with her husband back in bed. I could not sleep. I didn't want to close my eyes because I was so scared. And Joe won't be able to ease Karen's fears. That's when my husband, Joe, started to sleepwalk. He's always talked in his sleep, but sleepwalking is unusual. Walk across the room, and I actually opened the door. I didn't know I actually opened the door. My wife tells me I opened the door. I was having a very vivid dream. Everything was in kind of a dark glow, like, like you'd get with a lamp oil light. And in this strange dream world, Joe is not alone. Oh, The dream was way more realistic than anything I've ever dreamt about before. There was a man standing there with blood covering his entire apron. He had a southern style goatee and a thin mustache. Ah! Because I had such a heightened fear level, I certainly thought that the sleepwalking incident could be something paranormal. So much death, death. Joe's nightmare gets even stranger. <laughs> and he handed me wood. looked as if he was carrying something in his arms. I felt very disturbed by what was going on. I felt like I was traveling through time. I was being controlled somehow. So much death. He then sat down whatever it was that he was carrying. It's almost as if the entity is controlling him, and the entity is immersing him into the historical event that occurred there. He's not just dreaming about it, he's reenacting it. It seemed like I was just going through the motions of what I was supposed to do. So Joe accepts what's handed to him. He then repeated the process of carrying something in his arms and setting it down. Lay it down on a pile. But it's not wood that he's stacking. It was a severed arm. <sighs> it scared the 
living shit out of me. In America's South, in a hotel built during the Civil War, guest Karen Noonan can only watch as her husband Joe is trapped in the trauma of a battlefield come to life. <laughs> this man, who's covered in blood, hands me an arm. <laughs> and I put it on a pile of arms and legs. I honestly felt like he was possessed by something at that time. It was more real than it was a dream. Suddenly, he's released from his living nightmare. I was just awake, and it was over. He said, I just had the strangest dream. I'm sorry. I'm like remembering this, and it's freaking me out. Um. I was blown away that he was having such a horrific dream. At breakfast, Joe still can't get over how real the dream was. But he soon finds out just how real. It's got a very interesting history. Dates back before the Civil War, actually. It was at that point we learned the home was a field hospital during the Civil War. When he first said it, the blood had kind of rushed out of my head because that made it completely real. Haunt things are always going to be specific to the circumstances that led to them. Sometimes that may be just in a single room. That's where the traumatic incident was. That's where the memory's imprinted. And that's where the haunting is. And in this haunted hotel, that happens to be the room where Joe and Karen spent the night. We learned that our room that we slept in was the morgue. And this is where the amputee legs and arms were kept until they could be disposed of. Moving limbs and piling them up, it could be the entity's way of saying, don't forget what happened here. And the strange noises upstairs that Karen heard in the night? It was a ballroom that was above our room. And I imagined it was the ghost of Civil War soldiers convalescing in the ballroom. I was not a real believer in ghosts. I thought they were just stories. <laughs> But at this time, I say I am a believer of the paranormal. The experience there has strengthened my belief that there's definitely something paranormal. <laughs> and I'm not eager to see that again. The seasonal holidays can be a true tonic for the soul. But when a traumatized spirit gets thrown into the mix, they can quickly become bad medicine. For rustic B&Bs like this one in Canada's countryside, it's time to deck the halls, roast a few chestnuts, and make merry for the guests. 
But if you happen to pick one that's haunted, <laughs> like Monica Wolf and her husband, uh, reservation for Wolf. There are some things you just don't want to find in your stocking. It was my Christmas present. It surpassed anything I thought we could <laughs> like afford. It was amazing. It was immaculate. It was a giant Christmas tree. It must have been 12 feet tall. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. I was expecting a romantic night with my husband. But that's not what happened at all. We went out for dinner around 8 o'clock that evening. We arrived back at the bed and breakfast. It must have been about 10.30. Quarter to 11, so somewhere high. in there, and the house was completely quiet. As they approach their room, something isn't right. Do you smell it? It was like old pine oil mixed with bleach, like my grandmother used to use to clean the bathrooms. Who's cleaning at midnight? <sighs> Something as specific as this scent is a definite clue. A clue to what they don't know yet. But it's going to take a lot more than a bad smell to ruin the happy holiday vibe. Well, it was our romantic weekend, so it was like, you just sort of brush it off. But a traumatized spirit isn't so easily ignored. All of a sudden, I hear a baby crying. What? And I thought, oh, that's what happened. Someone's baby threw up somewhere or got sick, and the owners came and cleaned it up. That made so much sense. Except for one tiny thing. I hope that baby doesn't keep us up all night. What baby? Come on. The only problem was that my husband couldn't hear the baby crying. Yeah. Many times at the start of haunted activity, there are things that are equivocal. Should I have smelled that? Should I have heard that? Is that normal for this place? But nothing here is normal. Wait, do you see that? See what? And it may take a series of events before you realize, no, none of this adds up. Come on, let's go. It sounded like a sick baby, like colicky. I don't hear anything. It kind of, kind of made me kind of feel nervous and edgy. I thought maybe the sound was being carried through a vent or something, but why can't he hear the baby crying? The next thing that happened was very scary. Because then the atmosphere changed. Something had shifted. <gasps> this cold breeze comes directly towards us. And before I could even really process what was happening, <laughs> the clock struck midnight. <laughs> I just froze, and I thought, what's gonna happen next? At an idyllic B&B in the Canadian countryside, Monica Wolf and her husband are confronted by strange smells and sounds, hints of a spirit's traumatic life and death. Oh, God. Ah! I had this feeling, like, I don't know, uneasiness. And after the long drive to get here, Maybe all she needs is a good night's sleep. I was 
not thinking anything paranormal was going on at all. I just thought that there has to be an explanation. But the explanation is not for the faint of heart. Especially when Monica senses something wrong. It was like your heart skips a beat. All of a sudden, I did hear the floor creaking. Across the room, there was a rocking chair. And there was somebody sitting in it. Your brain is like, how did that person get into the room? Who is that person in the room? But whatever she thought she saw, it's no longer there. I felt like I was going crazy a little bit. People will always doubt themselves when something beyond description is happening, but this is something you can't deny. There was a woman sitting in our rocking chair, as clear as day. that moment, uh, that's not a person, that's a ghost. A reminder of a traumatic life forever trapped in the b and I was terrified. <laughs> Grabbed my husband who was sleeping and I said, wake up. <laughs> There was a woman on the chair. She wasn't there. I am but her husband needs no hard convincing. I and I said, there was a woman in that chair. He <laughs> looked at me and said, I believe you. I felt like someone was sitting there watching me the whole night. Do you, wait, do you see that? He just had the creepiest feeling since we got in there that somebody was watching us from that corner of the room. He said, this was our romantic getaway weekend. So well, I didn't want to scare you. And if we must have dozed off on and off until it was about six in the morning. At breakfast, Monica is on the hunt mm -hmm. for answers. I kept thinking, okay, so where's the couple with the baby? Where's the baby? But none of the guests have children with them. Oh, thanks, I think we're good. And I said to him, so there was no babies or small children? And he looked at me weird, and he said, no. I have a question. What's the history of this manor house? He said that the house then changed hands a few times until it finally became a maternity hospital. And there was like over 2,000 babies born in that house. My blood ran cold. I actually could feel m the blood draining from my face. It was creepy as All the pieces start to form a startling picture. So in that moment, I'm putting together the cleaning products. Do you smell that? The sound of the baby crying and the woman in the chair. 
probably a nurse assisting a birth or assisting a mother. There's a burden that some of these spirits carry and they literally need to pass it off to a, a living human being. If I had any doubts about paranormal activity or the paranormal, this experience at the B&B sealed the deal for me, 100%. I absolutely know she's still there. Millions check into hotels each year. Some check into another dimension. I'm not easily scared, and this shook me. Every night, I was terrified. I was looking at somebody very evil. And the experiences of thousands are contained within a single building. The laws of space and time are changed. Past invades the present, and fears turn to reality. They say it's the soul that makes us human which could explain why, after losing theirs in death, some entities come seeking ours. And for the most evil of spirits, gaining complete control of our soul is as easy as taking candy from a baby. But here in Jefferson City, Missouri, new owners Aaron and Aaron Clark are too busy chasing their lifelong dream of running a B&B to imagine any of this. The thought of having an Airbnb has always been something that's interested me. Erin stumbled upon this house in Jefferson City where her family resides very close to. Jefferson City is actually the capital of Missouri. Lots of architecture, lots of like cobblestone streets and historical preservation. They have, you know, haunted ghost tours and things like that. Very historical town. Located in the trendy neighborhood of Hobo Hill, it's one of seven homes built here at the turn of the century. I really wanted investment property that we could make some income off of. We automatically fell in love with it. So we decided to make it into an Airbnb. I think everyone has that dream property or the business that they want to run, so they don't really take into account the paranormal challenges that might be there. I can't wait to show the kids. <sighs> but you know what they say, love is blind. We went down to the basement, as we always do with any home, just to see how the foundation is and whatnot. The moment you started walking in the basement, the energy shifted. We could not explain it. The feeling was not pleasant at all. It just made me feel very heavy and almost ill feeling. And it's accompanied by a very strange discovery. Weird. Too weird. What is that? There was a large cage. We initially wrote off as maybe a root cellar or something, just something other than what she and I were both thinking. It was large enough to, you know, house people. With a lock meant to keep something trapped for good. The cage that was down there added a lot to the creepiness of that basement. We knew something was weird. OK, I'm out.
And something else seems off. There is a circular wet spot that's in the corner of the room. I've had several people say that it's probably a spring underground or maybe some plumbing issues. But plumbing isn't the only problem with this house. Oh my God, Aaron! Come quick! Aaron, hurry! There was a 666 along with a pentagram that was spray painted on the door. I believe that there was satanic worshiping at some point. When someone is dabbling in black magic, trying to summon spirits, you don't know what you're dealing with, and you don't know who it's going to affect and to what degree. The demonic graffiti reminds them of the rumors swirling around Hobo Hill House. The stories that we heard, people up in Jefferson City, that they always called that house the haunted house on the hill. We had lots of people who told us they had a bad vibe or they saw scary things, or when they walked by, they felt a certain energy. My beliefs in the paranormal prior to 2018 was little to none. I've never even thought about ghosts. We weren't people that believed that, so we kind of just laughed it off. The big mistake that people make is they think that the paranormal stories aren't real and that they don't need to pay attention to them. So instead, they're denying their existence, and that's only going to make them even more angry. And sure enough, soon after moving in, the cracks start to show. From the very beginning, we had TVs that turned on. Uh, we had a Bluetooth radio that turned on. We had just weird stuff start happening. Mommy, are the lights broken again? No, it's fine, honey. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. <gasps> I was trying to think of anything that it could be. Sure. I was still trying to make sense of it. And since it was an old house, it was easy to write those things off just to old bumps and creeks and things like that. We just wrote it off to bad electrical work. Except not everything can be written off as shoddy handiwork. Oftentimes, we'll see paranormal activity, especially negative activity, will slowly begin to escalate. Oh. Oh. Mom! Oh, it's OK, honey. I'll get the broom. OK. Be careful. I will. I tried to open the door, and it was locked. And knowing that my daughter can't even barely reach the lock, I asked her, did you lock this door? Mommy, I didn't lock it. It was one of the first things that I put in debunk. The lock had locked on its own. No one had locked the, 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 the deadbolt in their bedroom. It had locked. The more that the entity knows it can affect people, the stronger it gets and the more it's going to want to continue to affect people. I look back at the experience with the deadbolt, and it was the first of many clues. The question is, in this haunted B&B, how long can you ignore them? Yes? The 
We couldn't believe of what was happening to us. Dreaming of turning this old manor into a B&B in Jefferson City, Missouri, Aaron and Aaron Clark soon find that it seems to be living up yes. to its haunted reputation. Each month, more things would happen, and then it just started to get worse. But what they don't know is that whatever lurks inside is after the soul of the innocent. My son was about two years old when we were living in that house. And every morning, we would go get him. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Gary Gary. OK. Gary Gary Gary. He'd always say, you know, scary, it's scary. And we would turn around, and obviously, there was nothing there that we could see. But he was definitely seeing something that was in his crib area that was scary. Gary, Gary. Children are much more open. They haven't been deprogrammed to shut all that out. They're more vulnerable and approached in the right way. They are more susceptible. There was no explaining any of it. Despite the unexplainable, Aaron and Aaron aren't ready to pack it in. The problem was, you know, we did not want to be driven out by something that may or may have not been there and a fear of being called crazy. It's scary, tell me. Where? Right there. <laughs> there it was a feeling of you know, we bought this house, we made it two hours, and we're gonna try to stick it through. What we thought was that it would go away, and it was the opposite. It just seemed to get uglier. Oftentimes, we'll see paranormal activity, especially negative activity, will start out small. And then as the people react to it, the entity gets stronger, it gets bolder, increasing its energy. And for a hungry, dark entity, nothing boosts energy like a human soul. There was one night in particular where my daughter woke me up in my sleep because I heard her crying. She was out of bed looking out the window, and I couldn't see her face. And I could physically see her crying because her shoulders were bouncing up and down like she was sobbing pretty hard. Did something happen? What's wrong? And I continually asked her what was wrong, and she would never reply. And then I finally kind of raised my voice to her, saying, you know, what's wrong with you? Did something happen? What's wrong? What's going on in here? Under the bed. And she just looked us dead in the face and said, Mommy, there's a red and black man under my bed. There's a man. It 
it, it confirmed all suspicions I had that there was something more than just us in the home. It was very terrifying for me to see my daughter look like that. A negative entity will purposely seek out victims, and they'll go after that person right down to their soul. In this particular case, they weren't even safe in their own home. There was no escape, no place to hide. When Raina started sleepwalking, it was gradual. But just like everything else in that house, it just escalated. Every night, I was terrified. Again. While my daughter was sleepwalking, I was terrified that she was going to fall down the stairs and hurt herself. That was my main concern. Did you block the door? So I did put something up against the stairs so she couldn't get through. Move this! Move it. And as she saw the barricade, she started freaking out. Move this! Move this! Move this! Aaron finally realizes something unseen is invading his daughter's soul. I came to understand that while she was sleepwalking, someone was controlling her. Because she turned around, with her head tilted to the side, and it freaked me out beyond belief. Like I was looking at somebody else. Somebody very evil. With a dream of opening a B&B &B in Jefferson City, Missouri, owners Aaron and Aaron Clark are grappling with a dark force that has extraordinary powers. One that seems to have their daughter's soul in its grip. Mom. I saw something messing with her. Mommy. I saw her as if she was like a shell. And she had a puppet master behind her. I understand. Spirit possession is terrifying. The ultimate way that a spirit can uh, instill fear into the living. And she just said, Mommy, what would happen if I threw my baby brother out the window? Mom, Mom. I have no doubt that what was happening to my daughter was something paranormal. Mom. Mom. <laughs> I know this isn't you talking. <laughs> and I just kind of panicked. She started crying and she said, Mommy, I need to tell you something. I did not say that about my baby brother. I did not want to say that. My brain told me to say that. I believe that there was a demon trying to possess my daughter. I just, come on. The idea here is to use their own child against them uh, to cause them to be more afraid than they could ever imagine possible and therefore to give that entity more energy. That was a complete game changer. I, I was terrified, I was terrified for my entire family. I felt terrible for my husband because he, he had to take the role of trying to protect us against something that he couldn't even see. He was trying to act really strong, but I know he was exhausted. Parents, Aaron and Aaron had to have felt completely helpless 
And the big fear should be, what's going to happen next? What else is it capable of? You know, as our fear grew, we went to search for, you know, spiritual help. <laughs> to me, the cages and the basement in general are where a lot of the, the yuckiness starts. They call in a medium to investigate the basement. Aaron, I sense. And at the center of it, residue from the mysterious pool of water. Oh, it stays the same size, the same shape, the same dampness, and I can't um, debunk it, so to speak. But the medium has an explanation. She believed that that Please wet spot could be me. a portal that was inside the basement. She said that terrible things happened in that basement. The story was that a man who was a satanic worshiper buried his daughter in the basement alive. He was testing her faith. She didn't make it, she died. She basically told me, don't ever go into the basement again. Part of the reason why there might have been a portal in their basement is because the nature of the activity that is said to have taken place in that basement, it was so traumatic, so heinous, that it actually ripped open the doorway from one world to the next. And now that doorway must be shut. Oftentimes, we see a dark entity is a very powerful entity. This is someone who in life took pleasure torturing people, and in death continues to torment and torture people. <laughs> I was instructed to cleanse that basement with frankincense and sage. OK, Aaron. We need to work together now. And now we must pray. Our Father, Saint Michael, be who art in heaven, defend us in that name. I stood by that wet spot as long as I could to cleanse it as deep as I could. We humbly pray. By the power of God. I did not feel 100% satisfied with, with the cleansing. Amen. Amen. And with the floodgates wide open, the soul hunter now targets the rest of the family. Every night, I was terrified and I felt like it was just feeding off of me. And so I was getting weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker. One night, I woke up, felt the air change, like a big black cloud of pressure on my body. That moment, I felt completely helpless. It was a pressure that felt smothering. And there was this thing laying on top of me. I couldn't scream, I couldn't move. And I just laid there in terror. Every instinct of my being felt like it was killing me. In Jefferson City, Missouri, the Clark family is being hunted down one by one Surfing. by an evil spirit prowling for souls. Now it's Aaron's turn. I felt like something was purposefully smothering me, choking me. 
<laughs> Putting all its weight on top of me, knowing that I could not fight back. I couldn't move, scream, breathe. Then it simply vanishes. I was terrified and I felt absolutely helpless. The entity was already feeling like it had control of her daughter and was just craving more, trying to see what kind of power and influence it could have over that entire family. Now since my daughter was affected, my wife was affected, my entire family was being attacked, it was time for us to go. I, I couldn't handle it anymore. And it was like telling us, this is only gonna get worse. You can't beat us. And we couldn't do anything about it. And we just gave up. But with what they know about the house, it's not like they can simply unload it to some unsuspecting buyer. Uh, we did not want to put anybody else in that long-term type of situation. They keep to their original dream for the place. <sighs> Our perspective on having it as a short-term rental Airbnb is that short-term is the key. Short-term is just a casual, fun event, whereas long-term turns into something personal. When our guests uh, book a stay with us, they are well informed that it is haunted. Um, so they are all well aware of what they're booking. We have had lots of guests that have experienced things. We've had guests who didn't stay the night. It certainly hasn't died down. I do believe in that house, there was a power struggle between my family and I and the red and black man. Looking further into it, they uncover another possible explanation for the nasty entity. There's some speculation that owners in the 1900s held prisoners in the basement to work on the home, inmates from the prison that was down the road. And if they couldn't get them back in time, they would house them in these cages in the basement. That pain and suffering and just really nasty things happened, and it's the, it's the spark of why the rest of the house is so powerful. A dark entity that tried to steal their souls and crushed their dream. We humbly pray. I'm 100% a believer now. I don't discredit anybody's experiences due to what my family and I have experienced. <laughs> the safety of my family is my absolute biggest concern as a mother, um, and it was the worst part about this whole experience. So if you find yourself in Jefferson City, Missouri anytime soon and want to check into a haunted hotel, consider yourself warned. When an evil spirit goes hunting for human souls, it isn't always about controlling body and mind. Sometimes it's to unload the pain of a dark memory into a new host. But in the American Northeast, in an historic boutique hotel, British traveler Janet O'Carroll and her husband think they've hit the jackpot with their choice of a place to stay. When we took a cab from the airport and arrived at the hotel, we were both a little bit tired, but mega excited. It's perfect. Oh, wow. We thought, wow, this is absolutely lovely, made the right choice here. We just fell in love with the look of it, and well, it was just beautiful. But that beauty hides a dark secret. 
one that has her soul in its crosshairs. And Janet immediately feels it. When we got onto our floor, it was a, a little bit of a strange feeling. Some people are extremely sensitive to the emotions that are either imprinted or existing in a particular location. And so they're going to tend to be much more susceptible to paranormal experiences. Nick had gone to open the hotel room door, and it was jamming. Right. Hmm. It would only open a matter of inches, and then it sort of jammed on something. So we try again, pull the door to open it again. It just wouldn't go. Like something or someone just stood there not letting us in. This is just really odd. Blocking the door could be a sign that the spirit is saying, this is my space. Could also be a warning to say that they need to get out of there. You might have to go down to reception. The second that Nick said that, the door released. And that's what we found the most weird. Oh, well. And I'm going very, very tingly, very cold and hair standing up on the back of my neck, because I can actually feel what it was like then, because it was, that's just freaky. Strange. And there's nothing there, you know? There was no other way into that hotel room apart from the window, and we were 14th floor up. But as an avowed non-believer, her husband is more interested in the view. Oh, that's just lovely. I thought, don't be daft, like, you know, just calm down and forget it, get on with it. Then the radio had turned on for no apparent reason. It was like an, a vintage radio. just playing away to itself. Spirits have the ability to manipulate electronic devices, but a radio is especially good for them to target because it doesn't really take a lot of energy to power up a radio. could make sense of that and just looked at each other and shrugged it off sort of thing. And I just felt more and more weird. Should we go look around town? Yes, please. Didn't unpack, just went off for a walk and exploring. When you let your guard down in a place where there's paranormal activity, you're making yourself susceptible to falling into that activity. A perfect state for those looking to torment your soul. Care for a nightcap? Oh, I'd love one. <laughs> okay. I said, right, I'll go and get some ice for our drinks.
There were people passing by in the corridor, yet it felt quite still. There was quite a suppressed atmosphere. I just felt really sort of unbalanced. I've seen a gentleman walking in front of me. Looks like he's holding something like a tray. I seem to be walking faster than he was. So I gained a couple of metres on him. As he turned the corner left, I turned the corner left after him. Ah! He just vanished. It was a ghost. In a stately American hotel, guests Janet O'Carroll and her husband have experienced strange events. Now she thinks she's seen a ghost. I just stood there and I felt like my hair had stood on end. I'm not easily scared and this shook me. There was nowhere for this guy to go. He just vanished. Janet has mediumship abilities. Uh, that makes her uh, a light in the darkness for the spirits. And a perfect target for soul hunters. I quickly got the ice, and uh, to say I walked back very quickly is a, an understatement. As night darkens over the city, so does the feeling of dread in Janet's hotel room. The overall feeling just deepened and darkened. It seemed to get denser and denser, like something was pressing down on you. Something tracking down a soul. A good hunter will lie in wait, it will observe, it will get you in the situation it wants to do whatever it wants to you. Didn't feel alone at all. I'd look around the room and there were black patches. And they, they'd move. One minute it'd be in the one corner of the room. And then I'd look again, it's over the other side of the room. Well, I'm getting quite freaked out. I thought, shall I wake Nick up? And I thought, no, no, because he'll, you know, he'll think I'm being stupid here. And then I just had a really suppressive feeling. I saw and outlined it, it was like a mist. <laughs> but it was the, the colour of like a dirty nicotine. <laughs> this mist is something that doesn't have enough energy to fully form, but is certainly trying to. <laughs> My brain couldn't work out what on earth was going on. <laughs> <laughs> And what I saw was like a mist the size of a woman. I felt full of dread. But I felt it was her dread. I felt like she was impressing her dread onto me. Some of these spirits could be considered soul hunters. They have the ability <laughs> to almost enter your mind. <laughs> I felt so emotionally upset, and it was almost like she was beckoning me to follow her to the bathroom. I didn't want to get out of bed. 
I had no choice. I did not want to get out of bed. What we have here is spirits leading Janet to a scene that they want to show her. And I'm fully awake. Very apprehensive to open the door because I thought, what's going to be in there? What am I going to see? I saw what looked like someone had been butchered on the floor. And I just, I, I froze. I felt absolutely petrified. In a posh hotel on America's East Coast, the soul of British traveler Janet O'Carroll has been hijacked by an entity with a grisly tale to tell. It was just some, like someone had been butchered there and then because the blood, the huge puddle of blood, it was like fresh. It's like whatever had happened had just happened. A brutal homicide, a brutal suicide. Any of those types of traumatic events can bind a person to the location. <laughs> Not just about uh, being told what happened, it's about reliving it and experiencing it for herself. I just absolutely froze. It really just put the fear of God up me. She's stepping back into time and looking at things through the eyes of the spirit themselves. Then I actually shook my head and blinked, and the whole lot just disappeared. Nothing. Nothing at all. I was absolutely horrified. As I glanced around, there was a sort of dirty nicotine sort of colour. I felt dread and horror. I could see what looked like a man. He was covered in blood. Something had gone on that was deep and very, very dark and sinister. The embry just vanished. But Janet's memory of the incident has not. I can see it in my mind now. That's how powerful it was. <coughs> that image has stopped with me. That is over five years ago. And it is still, I can see it as clear now as where I did then. The power that can be behind these experiences is immense. The fact that they are trying to make this a shock factor moment for you, they're going to do all they can to make sure that that registers. In the morning, Janet convinces her husband to check out earlier than planned. And I told him exactly what had gone on, and, you know, he did not disbelieve me because he too had experienced the unexplainable. Both of us tried the door, we couldn't get in. <gasps> Both of us experienced the transistor radio going on. It's not even plugged in. It was just such a strange feeling. From the second we walked in the room to the second we left. Everything together, 
I just felt like someone was desperate to tell me their story of something that had happened that was deep and very, very dark and sinister. God. Janet's abilities make her uh, a much easier tool for these spirits to utilize to get their story across. This is the energy that they've been waiting to come into this location so that they can tell their story. I felt that this woman was the, the wife or girlfriend of the gentleman. They both at some time frequented that hotel room. She was trying to tell me that he was brutally murdered. I also felt that the murder was covered up. This female spirit was showing a living person exactly what went down. The spirit realized that this is the person they've been waiting for to tell their story. Beautiful hotel. Beautiful stateside holiday, but I was glad to leave that hotel room.